So hello everyone, this is Bea from the marketing team of We Grow VA. We're back with another interview with another awesome guest. So over here at We Grow VA, we are on a mission to help people and businesses, big and small, reach greater heights through the help of virtual assistants. We believe that one of the most effective ways to grow is through conversations. So whatever the topic may be, whether that's about the self, community, technology, marketing, the world, literally anything, we Grow Conversations are our way to help us and our audience to grow even further. And today's conversation is going to be another great one. We are going to learn about unleashing the potential of conversations in nurturing human development with Diana Radulescu. And if you want to watch or listen to any of our previous conversations with our awesome guests, then make sure to be subscribed to our YouTube channel. Simply search for We Grow VA. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be the first to know whenever a new, whenever a new video drops. Now let's get this show on the road. Let me introduce our guest for today. So Deanna currently hosts the Label Free Podcast, an innovative podcast in which she discusses how we avoid allowing society to put a label on us and how we rise above that expectation. She explores through a human standpoint on how we learn to break free and grow past our fears with a variety of guests from all walks of life. Deanna also has an outstanding experience as Vice President of Operations with over 12 years of management experience and a remarkable track record of delivering exceptional results. Strategic thinker and analytical strategist, Deanna possesses the ability to drive accelerated growth, introduce new programs, reduce costs, and improve operational performance. So again, as I mentioned, for today's interview, we'll be talking about Unleashing the Potential of Conversations in Nurturing Human Development with Deanna Radalascu. So we have Deanna over here already. So how are you? Good, Bea. Thank you for that incredible introduction. Like, I need you to follow me around everywhere and tell, and tell people that just when tell I meet tell everyone. Them. Oh, have yes. you met Deanna? And yeah, then I'll so just go with the whole spiel. I love it. It's awesome. I mean, I really, you you compliment me and I, you humble me as well. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So there are two things with that introduction. You know, yes. so we have your professional career of working with people and managing yes. them. And the other is with your current podcast, which has been yes. steadily posting interesting conversations left and right. And just mm -hmm. recently, you have hit over 400 episodes. Yes. So I just wanted to say from the get go, wow. And congratulations. That is yes. such an incredible feat. I can't fathom 400 episodes of yes. doing what you do. And that's definitely something we would also love to achieve here with We Grow VA eventually. So often you're on the side of asking questions, but for today, we hope you don't mind that we'll be asking you the questions. For so, sure. you know, you know, tables have turned here. So the, the first question I wanted to ask you was, can you share with us a favorite conversation or podcast of yours that really taught you something new, like something that really blew your mind? You know what? I, I have to say that almost every show I do, every guest, I learn something new from them. I'm getting a mini like education with everyone that I have on. Some are emotional, some are analytical, some are strategic, but almost every conversation I learn some some pearls of wisdom within that within that conversation. And it's just People are truly amazing when you listen to their stories. And that's why I say like everyone has a story. We've all been through something that has molded us, impacted us, and has created change within our lives. And so when I when I saw that question, I'm like, oh, that's going to be hard to really pinpoint because I walk away from almost every recording like, wow, I just like we it was just such a, um, a valuable it was such a valuable investment of my time. I definitely hear you on that. I mean, you've done 400 episodes. I've done this for over here on We Grow VA for at least over a year. I can say we've hit the double digits. Not nice. a, not like 400 or like 100, but you know, we're steadily growing there. And I can say that with every, and I echo the same thing that you were saying, that I grow and learn from each conversation that we've had yeah. uh, over here. So Having 12 years of experience managing people, do you have anything that you look out for when directing a person to the right direction, you know, essentially, ergo, like unlocking their potential? Sure. I love this question. Um, I, 
I'm a natural born leader. I'm the oldest of five. So I automatically was put into that role when I, when I was born and as my siblings came, um, I think it's very important to empower people and to, to like build on their strengths. And so my, a lot of my successes are that I've created other leaders, right? If you're a good leader, you're creating other leaders. And so I know that there's a lot of women that were under, that were under my management for all those years that are now incredible leaders themselves doing great things in the industry they work in. So I think when you are going to be a leader, you can't be condescending, you can't be like micromanagement. You have got to give people the tools. And that's very key because I know that, you know, I, I've been in corporate after being a leader and I had managers that did not provide me with the tools to, to do the job that I needed to do. So if you're in leadership, you've got to give your, your, your people that your your I mean, how do you say the people that report to you the tools to do the job that they need to do so that they can excel, you know, and sometimes I feel like there are leaders out there that don't want to see other people excel because they, they just weren't, they're not, they're not really truly a good leader. Oh, I hear you on that. Ironically, our previous guest, his name is Trevor Martin. We also talked about leadership and a part of what you said about like a good leader also inspires good leaders. That's mm -hmm. also something we kind of touched on. And yeah, I, I definitely agree with you that there are some people who doesn't who don't feel like they want you to succeed, especially yeah. when they're the ones leading you. It's like, as a leader, you should be setting them up for success. Yes. You should be setting up your people for success because their success is also your success. And a leader is just at the forefront, but you are a unit. Right. 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 Agreed. Totally agree. Yeah. So you've talked with a lot of people, more than oh, yeah, 400, yeah. <laughs> more than 400 people. And I bet a whole lot more in those 12 years. Yeah. It's probably you know. over 2000 at this point it has to be. Uh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have a backlog of several hundred episodes and not everybody I talk to is on the, on the podcast. So there's, mm. yeah, there's, I've talked to a lot of people. Definitely. So what do you think are the biggest obstacles people face in communication and their development, Ooh. specifically for, you know, like conversations? Really listening, you know, like being able to actually listen to someone and be empathetic. And I think that someone that leads with their ego and not their heart is not going to really hear what someone has to say. And I know I've been a guest on other, on other shows where, it's like the, 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 the host wasn't really listening to me and just kind of going through the motions. And it was, you know, it was interesting for me as someone who has a podcast to experience that I make sure that I show up fully dialed in to listen to my guests and just to honor them with listening and being able to hear them and say, you know, if I'm confused about something, well, I heard you say, you know, and kind of repeat back what my understanding was. And I think that really allows someone to feel valued. You know what I mean? And, you know, communication, everybody has a different style of communication, but listening, really being dialed into that, to that person when you're having that conversation is so super important and making that connection, right? We have to connect. And if we're not connecting and being authentic, it's just not like, it doesn't, it doesn't seem very valuable for anybody to listen to it. I mean, who's going to, who's going to want to listen if you're not being authentic? Oh, that is so true. And again, it's very ironic that you mentioned listening because again that has kind of been a running theme I guess for us over here on We Grow VA the past month it's really just mm -hmm. a lot about listening we've also had a recent again interview and we asked them like any last tips or like uh, right. what is like an underrated skill and they said they say it's underrated but it, well it's not that it's underrated if anything it's number one but people still fail at it and it's still listening and yeah. I just find it very ironic that you both have said the same thing or, yeah. well, you know, echoed the same thought. And I guess that just proves that how important it is, you know? Yeah. That yeah. and great minds think alike, right? Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> so you kind of touched on it a little bit with how a conversation, like how would you really have a conversation with someone if you're not being authentic? Or like, how are you going to listen to someone not being real with you, being authentic with you, or like, if anything, they're not listening to you. 
Um, as a last question, though, do you have any tips on having a fulfilling and encouraging conversation with someone? And I would like to add that, uh, add to that, like, especially if they're kind of guarded. Hmm. Because I think we've established that you need to listen. And yeah. when you feel that someone's listening to you, you ease up. But what if yeah. you're trying to kind of break down a wall hmm. and you want to encourage them to talk more? <sighs> See, I don't really, I think since I'm such a natural, I put people at ease almost right away. You know, I've never really had an issue of, you know, encouraging the conversation or fulfilling because I, I ultimately lead with my heart and I want to connect with people. And so, um, you know, I've heard that a lot at the end of my, at the end of my recordings, like, oh, wow, you made me feel so at ease. It was such so much fun. And I think that, you know, what I try to do is really relate to my guests. You know, we all have experiences. We've all experienced some something in our life that can really allow us to be empathetic to someone when they're talking to us about their story. And so for me, especially with my show, I love how you say we are innovative, you know, in just trying to um, help people rise or encourage people to rise above the expectation of society. So those, those, those conversations are a little bit different because we want to talk about things that make us vulnerable, right? And that vulnerability piece, people have to feel safe when they're going to go to that, that place. And so for me, I've, I've, I'm vulnerable. I'm what you see is what you get. I'm going to, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm going to cry in the conversation if I feel moved. So from, I have always been able to really connect with 99.9% .9 of my guests, not everybody is going to, you know, I can't connect with everybody, but most of them, I'm always being able to make that, that heart to heart connection. And I think that if people allow themselves to be vulnerable and really kind of let their wall, their wall down, let their guards down. And like we, you mentioned, uh, being authentic, you can really have a fulfilling and encouraging conversation with someone. And I lead with positivity. You know, I'm like the glass is half full not have empty, you know, and if it's something, you know, I don't always have a great, I don't have, every day is not a great day, but I wake up saying it's going to be a great day. I wake up saying like this, uh, great things are coming. Even if something bad happens, I try to always put those positive affirmations. in. so when you lead with that positivity, I also think that gives people the space to feel more comfortable too. So I, I hope that answered your question, but there, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, like from, from your heart, you know, and from you know, leading with your heart, not your mind. Ooh. I love that last part that you said, lead with your heart and your mind, correct? Or not your not your mind. Not your mind and then your mind. Sorry. Well that comes that comes next. You know, you should lead with your heart. You know, I always follow my heart. Everything in my life, I've just always followed my heart, you know. And sometimes most times good, sometimes mm -hmm. bad. But at least mm -hmm. I followed my heart and I listened to what it was telling me. And, and a lot of and most times it's been a beautiful journey. So Yeah. You know, I was while well, I was preparing for this. I was thinking about how ironic it is that we're having a conversation about having conversations and in some sort of way, well, you've hit 400 and I think with us over here, we're trying to, I was just reflecting that we're kind of trying to get to also where you are with the podcast and everything. And just from this, you know, conversation, the, you mentioned something about people are truly amazing when you listen to their stories. And mm -hmm. I can also vouch for that. I have not for a hundred people, but I have <laughs> listened to a bunch of uh, stories so far over the course of uh, a year. And it, it really changed. Like, well, first of all, just to share, I didn't think I would be doing this for this long mm, personally, yeah. but I have been, enjoying the most out of it and i realized especially over christmas actually um how much i've changed and how i've grown and i can see the people around me also grow and change the more that i spend time with them you get to yeah. know you know like the little quirks or maybe sometimes i guess like the friction sometimes mm -hmm. you see the friction and then you just Gotta be able to see and learn how to move past the friction. I also love the part in this conversation where you shared with us that a great leader also creates great leaders. And like, as yeah. I've also shared, a great leader is always going to be able to set their people up for success. 
Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mm-hmm. guess number one is lead with your heart. I've I've been enjoying this conversation, but now is the part of um I guess this interview where I have to ask you to promo. So I want sure. to tell the people, the viewers, listeners, how to find you, how to get in touch with you. Do you have anything to promote at present other than the podcast? All that good stuff. Thank you, Bea. First, I'm going to tell you, if you are committed, podcasting is a commitment. It's a community. And I feel that it's just going to continue to grow and get stronger over the next couple of years. So if you're wanting to get to 400, you will get there and having these conversations and really highlighting your guests is really like the most important thing, right? Um, but it, for as far as I'm concerned, my podcast is my business. I do do some podcast production on the side and some social media management for those podcasts that I produce. But the podcasting is pretty much all that I do. Label free podcasts is everywhere. You Google search me, you'll find me. But I'm very strong on Instagram. Instagram at label free podcast. You know, obviously our website, labelfreepodcast.com. We're on TikTok. LinkedIn, you know, all the things we do press releases quite often. So if you're wanting to learn about me and you put it, you can even Google search my name, you're going to find me everywhere. So Deanna Radulescu. So, I mean, um, we're here to support, inspire, encourage. We want to help people find their path, their true north and, and lead a more purposeful life because more people that are leading their life in a, in a purposeful way is a happier world, right? So we are here to share those stories, how people overcame those things and hopefully we're helping others grow. So that's all I have to promote. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And of course, don't worry, we will be putting all of Deanna's socials, contact info in the description box below. We will make sure that everywhere you will find her. I mean, she's also said it herself. Just Google her. <laughs> Quick Google, Google search. search. <laughs> Quick Google search. Or Yahoo, Bing, whatever you use. I mean, I'm <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> exactly. So, and don't forget, if you're a business owner that is in need of growing your business to achieve entrepreneurial excellence by hiring a virtual assistant, or maybe you're just curious to know more about what we can offer, then make sure to get in touch with us, We Grow VA. You can head over to our website, wegrowva.com to schedule a call. And don't forget to follow We Grow VA over on all of our social media to be updated on the latest ins and outs on anything and everything. All our links will be posted everywhere, essentially. So thank you once again to Deanna and everyone who stayed tuned until the end. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.